a good day everyone we're fixing to do a video in a couple in a series of a couple of videos on electronics how to set them up uh, how I mount my transducer and things of this nature one of the things a couple of things you need to keep in mind when you're uh, mounting your unit uh, I run a hummingbird 12 mega plus with the uh, side imaging down imaging GPS um, make sure you put your electronics your graph where you're gonna want it where it's gonna be in good eyesight of you I like to have mine so when I'm driving uh, down the lake or trolling around looking for fish it's sort of in my view of the path that I'm headed in I don't have to try to look around backwards or nothing like that uh, I'm trying to uh, ride ledges and look for fish and I want everything sort of to be uh, focused right where I want it. I want you to walk right here just a second. I have my big unit up here on the top. This right here is the uh, Hummingbird 12 Mega Plus. This right here is a Hummingbird uh, 9 Mega. I'm using this uh, 9 just nothing but for my on here and I, I've got Navionics and Lake Master on this one. Uh, this one right here come with a uh, Lake Master already installed on it. So I can pull my graph up on this one and I usually just use this one right here most of the time. Uh, I want it full screen on my sonar or my down imaging. Uh, I want it as big as I can get it. Let's walk back to the back of the boat. One of the most important things is if you're starting to uh, mount new electronics on your boat, it's going to be some problems trying to get the cables run through, but I promise you, take your time, be patient about it. I come in, took all the side uh, panels off of this boat. I run my cable back down through here. And this is what I found out on mounting the transducer. On the last boat I had, I had the transducer mounted over here uh, on the starport side. And um, I had it mounted sort of far over. And when I pulled up the side imaging, I couldn't seem to get to my right side. Uh, I could get real slow and pull my motor up, and I could see some on my uh, right side. I don't know if the motor was in the way or what it was. I just dealt with it. Um, but when I got ready to put this one on, I put this one right here on my driver's side, and I tried to come down and locate it close to the center of the boat. I couldn't get it all the way to the center, but you can see about where I have it at. And I don't know if you've seen some of the images that I put up. Uh, with my electronics, but I can, I can get a lot of detail and I've spent a lot of time and effort uh, trying to get this thing tuned in. One of the things I know it's frustrating, especially if you uh, was like me, I'm a sort of older generation. I wasn't you with good with electronics, but I'm telling you, I just continue to learn and continue to make myself go and do things that I was not comfortable with until I learned my electronics. There's no need to buy a 24, 35, 4,000, 5,000 dollar unit and not make or not maximize the most out of it. So in mounting this transducer, you wanna make sure of a couple things. When I'm mounting the transducer, uh, I've got me a four foot level. I want you to watch what I've done. I know I've, I've experimented a little bit with this. I probably just uh, learned by trial and error. But this is what I've done. I take this four foot level lay up on the bottom of the boat I did not want my transducer exactly level or flush with the bottom, and I did not want it sitting below the bottom of the boat. It's probably about two inches off from being flush at the bottom of the boat. You can probably see this. You just lay your level up on there, and you can get a good idea of that right there. Now, when this boat is sitting in the water, the water line comes up in here, so the transducer is up on the water good. But the reason I did not mount it below flush is so when I get on plane, this is not catching water and shooting a rooster tail up in the air. I did not want that. 
So let's come around the side. Once you mount this right here, you want to make sure. Let me take you a torpedo level. You're going to need one of these. And you want to make sure that you can be able to put it on there and get your boat set and level. Level it like this is one of the main things you want to do when you get ready to start leveling. The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that that transducer is sitting level in the water. Now, what happens a lot of times, we just set them according to the bottom of the boat. And yet, when our boat is in the water, it is sitting up at an angle. This boat right here, matter of fact, I think sits at five degrees when it's in the water. I've got a regular torpedo level and I've got an electronic level. Get you one or the other. Carry your boat to the lake, put it in the water. Once it's sitting there, put your level on it. You may want to pull it up to speed, maybe three to five miles an hour is what I done. Mine did not change from uh, sitting dead still to going three to five miles an hour. It was still around five degrees. If you do not have one of these, get you a regular level. And you see a lot of people doing this right here. Got you a pocket full of change. Once your boat is sitting in the water, uh, you want to just start adding it. Maybe some quarters up under the bottom of it. Uh, just like this. If that ain't enough, add some more quarters. Put you some nickels. Put you some dimes up under it until this bubble starts to read level. When you do that, make sure that you keep up with how much change you put up under it. When you come back home with your boat, what I done with mine is I parked it back up on the shop. I unhooked it from the uh, truck. I dropped my jack stand down. I pulled my level right here on the side of it. I jacked it up to it was five degrees is what I done. Once I done that, I come back here on the back. My boat was sitting just like it ought to be in the water, five degrees. And I made sure this transducer was sitting level. If you do not do that, you're not going to get an accurate reading. Take for instance, if this, if this transducer is kicked up like this right here off the back of the boat, this is shooting a beam out like this. If it's tucked up under, it's going to be shooting a beam up under the boat. You're not going to get an accurate reading on your depth. And uh, I want it when I go over something, my beam is shooting straight down. Make sure that you pay close attention to them things like this. Another thing that I want to say about this, because I've had, I know three or four guys that I have tried to help set the electronics up. Just, to, just a, a reminder, I use my electronics a whole lot. Matter of fact, I've, I've come real reliable on them. Uh, I run a iPilot link. Guys, there is a difference. Please listen to this if you're going out and if you're looking at dragging baits, if you're looking at drifting, and you want to connect your trolling motor to your electronics, there is a difference between iPilot and iPilot Link. I'm telling you, I've, I'm, I've done dealt with a couple of my friends who has went to a boat place. They've come back and asked me, said, Stacy, what I need? I said, make sure you get iPilot Link. Well, the guy down here at the... Uh, at Bass Pro or, 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 or Gander Mountain or wherever it may be at, said this right here has got the remote control. It's got the iPilot on it. I said, you gotta make sure it's iPilot link. If it's not iPilot link, it's not going to be able to connect your trolling motor to your electronics. iPilot is just gonna be a remote control where you have spot, look, spot lock. I think it has north up. It has some other details but you're not going to be able to go from waypoint to waypoint unless you can get your electronics to talk, what I call it, to my, my electronics to talk to my trolling motor. You're going to have to have iPilot link. Mine requires a cable to run from my trolling motor back to my unit. I'm hopeful this is going to be helpful to you. Just remember, take your time. Uh, don't be afraid and, uh, to uh, play with your unit a little bit work with the stuff we're going to do some more uh videos on this on how i set it up how i go through the setup i know i have a lot of people ask me what is my settings on what's the what's the sensitivity what's the contrast and i will i will tell you this 
Probably right now it's set on maybe 12, maybe 11 on one. But I tell people all the time, I says, I set mine every time I go out on a new body of water. Uh, I'm, I'm constantly sitting there just trying to get the very clearest picture that I possibly can. You may get into a place where you have real clear water. You may get into a place where you have muddy water. Just get, and it's very easy to do. We're gonna deal with this on the next video, but you have to make sure first and foremost, you got your transducer set up, that it's level when it's sitting in the water, that you got it level this way, and you have it level this way according to how your boat is sitting in the water. When you run your, uh, when you run your transducer cable also up through your boat, please make sure you do not get any, I try to make sure, do not get no kinks uh, in that cable. I don't know what it's got inside of it, but I figured it was something like a coax cable, which has a thin wire. You don't want this thing to break. Make sure you get all the kinks out of it, that it flows real good up to the, uh, up to the bow or wherever you're running up on your boat, back to your electronics. I don't think you have no problem with that. God bless you and look forward to part two where we're going to deal with the setup, dealing with sensitivity, how to set the unit up itself where it's easy to maneuver through. God bless you and have a great day.